Squeeze me between two sheets of sourdough because it's time for Crit Sandwich. Welcome to Crit Sandwich, the world's tastiest D&D podcast. Crit Sandwich is four friends playing 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons with random settings and plots. We will use adult language. We do edit lightly for brevity and to make us look super fast at math. And of course, we will screw up the rules. Welcome back to our uh, first, this is our first game, or welcome, welcome, not welcome back, welcome here to the table uh, at our first gameplay episode of Crit Sandwich. On our our previous episode, episode zero, we rolled on a chart and made a bunch of zany scenarios. We ended up with a group of priests in a traditional D&D world that is a utopia experiencing the plot of Jurassic Park. You can see the full chart on Twitter. We are at Crit Sandwich and on the Facebook's uh, Crit Sandwich podcast. Just search for that and you should be able to find us. Uh, On the previous podcast, you also got to meet our players. So let's go around the table. To my left, the bearded gentleman. Who are you, and what is the name, race, and class of the character you'll be playing? Yeah, my name is Matt, and I am playing Friar Josiah Ruckus, known for short as Friar Ruck, around the around the uh, <laughs> uh, church, I suppose it would be. Uh, he is a human, mid forties. I'd, I'd say he's not a dad, but rocking the dad bod a little bit portly. Not fat per se, but got a got a gut. And uh, he's a drunken monk. He he is the uh, in, at the church. He is the one that experiments and brews and makes makes the alcohol and you know tends to uh, try it a lot to per- perfect the recipes. So awesome! At the other end of the table, eating that crit sandwich with me, Lady in the Tramp style, oh. is another bearded gentleman, Chuck Ventus. Tell us uh, your name, your class, your, your race. Uh, yeah, my uh, character, his name is Van Veridi, goes by V for short. I am a uh, wood elf ranger, tall, slender, kind of scrawny, like most elves, you know, has right. a scar over his right eye. And to my right, the scruffily bearded gentleman, who are you, name, race, class, etc.? I'm Robbie, my character I'm playing is a lore bard, level three. His name is Reed Harpman, and he is a human. My name is Casey Sears. I am your host and Dungeon Master and have the biggest beard, which is why I'm the Dungeon Master, I assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of an alpha thing. Right. And I think we're just going to get into it. Let's just jump right into it. I like it. Cue, cue the dramatic music. <laughs> that's that's going to that's gonna happen in post. Right. It'll no, be I'm, there. I'm be laughing beautiful. about... Sorry, I was... When your first thing when you did the intro, I'm still thinking about it. Oh, the two (laughs) sheets of sourdough. Yeah, sorry. That's fine. Are you just are you just picturing it right now? Just me in between two big warm yeasty sheets, holding it in the entire time. Gotcha. Caught you off guard. It did. Yeah. All right. So this time for real, cue the dramatic music. One hundred years ago, the Great Banishment began. Ogres, trolls, and goblins vanished, gone without a trace. They were followed by the Aboliths, the Mind Flayers, the Beholders, and the Slod. Later, owl bears, minotaurs, man-eating plants, and other magical monstrosities blinked away. The next year, all forms of devils, demons, and other fiends disappeared. Even the spirits that lived in the hearts or blades of warlocks. Zombies, vampires, ghosts, and other undead also vanished. In the third year, Worven, Drakes, and Dragons were removed from the world. Poof. Gone. In the fourth and final year of the Great Banishment, the Orcs were wiped from existence. Humans, dwarves, elves, and gnomes worried for a time that they might be next. So their leaders strove for peace as to not look like monsters themselves. The people no longer in fear of the wilds, expanded and tamed the earth. Cities thrived, populations boomed, and a new utopia was born. 
Until recently, no one was sure as to how the Great Banishment happened. Was it the gods? Could it have been man? But then letters began to arrive. An invitation. And so we see, this is, this is the, the, the filmic version, in our mind's eye, we see a mechanical owl flying over the ocean towards uh, the Sword Coast, which is the traditional D&D kind of setting. It is, you know, an owl almost like made of stone with uh, glowing purple lines all over its body. And it's just flapping and flapping and flapping. And we see it fly over a small town towards a kind of a, a moderately sized building, which would be the temple that all of you are uh, professors at and also priests. There's a library attached to that temple and Chuck, your character V? That's right. Uh, what, what would he be teaching in the middle of a sunny afternoon? Uh, it would be a history of magical creatures. Okay. Or majoring in dragons, though. So, <laughs> are, you, are you inside, outside? Mostly inside, but I do take the class outside every now and then. So you're in the lecture hall, and the windows are open because it's a lovely day. And flying into that window is the mechanical, or not the mechanical owl, the construct owl. And it lands on the window, and its chest pops open. And inside is a letter, a scroll with a wax seal. And it pops out and drops onto the floor and rolls towards you. And the owl flies away. Would you like to read what's on that letter? Yeah, I would read it. Sure. Would you like to read it out loud for our our audience? Oh, and yeah, sure, I can. Also, do we do do we decide what the name of the town is? Because that's part of the letter. It just. I'm fine with Robbie's choice of scurvy gut. Scurvy gut, yeah. Scurvy gut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was savvy gut. Savvy gut. That's right. Great. Yeah. Savvy. Savvy gut it is. Savvy gut. Savvy gut. Making a note. Locking it down. Lock it, lock it in. All right. So Do we have a temple here's... name? <clears throat> Sorry. I thought it was just Temple of Agma. Dear representatives of the Temple of Agma in the city of Savvy Gut, as you surely know, the Great Banishment changed our world forever. Those of us responsible for the Great Banishment are ready to tell the story of how we removed monsters and monstrosities from the world from the place where it happened, the island of Planos. Did I say that right, Planos? Uh, pla- think Planos, like plain. Planos, like okay. Like the elements, like the planes of existence. The island of Planos. Discover the legendary and mystery island of Planos. Learn about the history of man before the banishment. See the first time in a century the monsters themselves. Delight and joy with wondrous displays and rides. Relax by our incredible beaches and scenery. We offer up to 10 representatives of this temple dedicated to Agma, high god of knowledge, to be among the first to preview Planos, Planos and its attractions. Planos is a beautiful testament of mortal ingenuity and grand architecture, breathtaking landscapes, and outstanding museums. Come celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Great Banishment. Meet at Dock 17 in Waterdeep on 17th of Kythorn. A boat will be waiting for you. Sincerely, Rupert Klinko, Lord Governor of Planos, Ma- Master Wizard of the Great Banishment. <laughs> P.S. We've had many years to ensure the containment of the creatures and safety of our guests. Don't worry. <laughs> you guys? I think you might need to worry. Oh, man. Let's just not go. <laughs> just chill here. So is the park famous, or is it just open? I mean, it's been around for 100 years. Is, do we already know about it? This park is brand new. Brand new. Okay. So the park is brand new, and it is like a... Se- like, no one really quite understood how the monsters disappeared. There were always rumors. There were always stories. No one really knew the real reason why, and now they are... They're putting it out there. The people that did it are like, come to our amazing magical island where the Great Banishment occurred. Uh, you're not quite sure what that means. You know, how You know how, how did they go to this island and remove all these things? Um, so I, at the, did you read it out loud to your class? 
Chuck, or V? Uh, no, I would say that I'd read it, read it in private, and as soon as I read it, I would tell my uh, class to continue their studies and excuse myself from the class to immediately take the letter to uh, Friar Ruckus. Mm-hmm. So I, Friar Ruckus, I feel like you're, yeah, you're the head, you're the yeah. head teacher guy, right? Well, yeah, kind of the head honcho okay. of the church. Uh, so yeah, you get the letter, and I assume you're, I assume you would be excited. Yeah, I would, I would likely be teaching the martial arts class where, you know, at, at one point it was for self-defense, but due to not, you know, needing that anymore, it's kind of just a tradition within the church to keep everyone fit. Uh, Friar Ruckus doesn't actually partake though. He kind of more explains to everybody else what they should be doing and then walks around and, and judges their technique rather than actually doing anything himself. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I've, if you're coming, busting in and saying, Hey, we've got this letter. He always kind of wanted to be a adventurer. You know, he's, he is only 40 and the banishment happened over a century ago. So he never really got to be a part of any action whatsoever. So absolutely. Friar Ruckus would be in for checking this out and be really excited about it. All right, so the word word spreads around the school, and the students are excited, and uh, eventually, I don't know what method you guys use, but you choose seven students and three chaperones. I think, well, I don't know, do you guys want to like have a drawing, or do we want to like take the seven best students? I, I feel like I would throw that to you guys. Like, Do we have... Looking at this list, do you think that they're the seven best, though? <laughs> that's, that's, that is true, actually. I've already right. created the seven students and their backgrounds and stuff, so it could be bad. They could all be good students. I would say random drawing. I don't know. Or whatever, yeah. Seven okay. best students. I'm cool with that. Robbie? I mean, you don't want to bring shitheads on a Yeah, that's yeah, true. Trip. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this so we would, yeah, these, this will be like, all right, well, so we will pick out the seven students that mm-hmm. we want to come based on so Agma is the god of knowledge and, and like innovation so we would maybe have the the seven best that we feel aren't like de- the most deserving okay are, is what I'm saying like the, sure. the the best that we feel are you know light, enlightened and innovation driven and things like that gotcha oh yeah like our A plus students yeah sure all right so uh, about half a month passes before you make the trip to Waterdeep with your with your students. And there is a boat waiting for you. So before we get on the boat, I would gather everybody up for prayer. Okay. And uh, probably all hold hands and recite some some holy scripture. I don't know. I'm trying to think of some random holy scripture. <laughs> Praise be to Agma. Okay. Yeah. Of uh, uh, Father. Uh, what's your uh, v V lead us lead us in a in a prayer today. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> gather round children, gather round children. Uh everyone hold hands, hold hands. I don't see you guys holding hands. Praise be to Agma and the knowledge that we will gain when we visit the island of Planos. Yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> Praise be to Agma. Praise, praise be to Agma. <laughs> nice. Is that your guy? That's your guy. Okay. He's, he's a little hacky. <laughs> little, a little bit of For sure. stuff up there. Oh, yeah. Uh, just general health isn't his style. I was just going to do a roll call. I, figure, I feel like my character would do a roll call before okay. we get on the sure. boat, just to make sure that everybody's there. So, oh, wait. I have to do all seven voices now, don't I? Yeah. Crap. All right, roll call, everyone. Aston Walsh. Here. Brawley Steves. Here. Cohen River. These, these voices are totally going to change the next time I do this. <laughs> of course. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Hold on, I need, to, uh, I need to pull up. I did not pull up my list of students. So these kids age, they average from 14 12. to 12. 12. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to let our audience know, these are the type of kids we're dealing with. Is <laughs> Not like three and four year olds. It's yeah. Like twerps. Hopefully they all wear deodorant because I'm told that that has an issue at that age. Like they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know you're supposed to start wearing deodorant because you stink if you don't. 
I thought uh, when I was that age and I started stinking pretty bad, I thought mm. like, yeah, I smell. I'm a, yeah. I'm a man. I got this. And right. then I was like, oh, I wait. I think there was smell. probably a good year or two there where I was super smelly and did not realize it. And girls just. And yeah, yeah, that was that was more than one or two years. Yeah, it's but, a tough, uh, tough go. Yeah, I think eventually I, I figured it out. Mm. Yeah, it was, I don't right. smell anything over here I wonder why she right didn't talk to me. Right, that's good. No, no, I'm very, I'm a very clean man now. Good. Yeah, I've come, I've come a long come way. A long way. Yeah, you got to start since somewhere. Twelve. Yeah. Aston Walsh here. Brawley Steves here. Cohen River <sighs> here. Cindy Green. I'm definitely here. Deverex Astora the Fourth. It's Devereaux. Yeah, Devereaux. Devereaux. <laughs> Everybody knows where to get that clothes. Devereaux. <laughs> Dever- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Devereaux Astora the Fourth. I'm here. Plim Willie. <laughs> I'm, uh, um, I'm here for present. Present. Quan McKay. Aki. She's French? No, that's Spanish. It's a key? Good. A key. Here. It's all, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I no, know. You're right. No, you're right. Here. That's, that's Friar Spanish. Rock. Everyone's here. We can proceed. It is only seven children, but thank you for being thorough. <laughs> we'll just do head count next. We'll say, it's all seven kids. Good. <laughs> Let's go. When it's Every seven. time I do roll call, I'm going to call out the names. Okay. <laughs> In case you'll have to redo. Yes. I'll... Yes, <laughs> make up completely new voices. No, just copy and it's paste, awesome. baby. Uh, uh, all right, we're all, we're all here. Let's let's go. Let's get on the boat. The journey is two and a half days, mm. and you get to the island uh, in probably the late afternoon, and from a distance, you see tons. Of, there's like a. V- Tons of rocks and smaller islands kind of surrounding it that look very dangerous. But the boat takes you south of the island, and there is a very, very long and wide beach where there are a few docks coming out from that long and wide beach. And there are palm trees, and it's beautiful, and it looks tropical. And as wide as the four docks are that go up, there is a a series of steps and flat areas and green spaces and statues and things. It is like um, a, a grand, grand park that is also kind of going up this hill uh, ab- above the beach. And you guys get off of the boat and there is a person holding a sign and the sign says, Temple of Ogma and Savigut. And it's a it's an older woman, probably around late fifties, early sixties, short gray hair, kind of a, like a librarian vibe to her. Dory carrying a carrying our luggage, I guess. Or yes, you guys are dragging your bags behind you. So I'll kind of like gut first, you know, kind of push the kids out of the way a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make Barrel way, through. make make way, children, make way, make way. Uh, ex- excuse me. Uh, we we are the uh, representatives from from uh, the Temple of Agma of Savigut. It's so nice to meet you. My name is Louise. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the island of Planos. Greetings, Lu- Louise. My name is Reed. Liz here is V. Yes, yes, and I'm 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 uh, the head friar here. My my name. Uh, my name is Friar Ruckus. You can you can call me Friar Ruck. What what uh what is this? Can you can you give us some background? We don't know anything. Oh yes 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 absolutely. I'll be your liaison and your guide for the time on the island. So behind me we have carriages drawn by construct horses, and you guys see these big, beautiful stone sculpture-like horses that look a lot like the uh, the owl that you saw that have, like, kind of, like... purpley, Yeah, lines. purpley veins and lines going around, and, like, some of their joints and body parts and stuff. What's her name one more time? Louise. And she says, 
Now, I, uh, from what I understand, I used to have family that served at that temple. Are any of you a Harpman? My name is Louise Harpman. You're a Harpman, man. I am Reed Harpman. <gasps> oh my goodness! Uh, my, I sorry. Go ahead. My grandfather was Clem Hartman. As well as mine. What does that mean? What are you, my sister? Cousin. Cousin. And then she, <laughs> she hugs you. I hug her, and I'm kind of weirded out. I'm like, I didn't know I had a cousin. Oh my goodness! So, Clem, you wouldn't know this, but Clem, I. So he had three boys, and the oldest of the three boys is my father. And uh, we actually used to call him. We used to call him uh, Pappy Metro because his nickname was Metro. Pappy Metro, huh? Mm-hmm. And uh, Reed would look at V because V used to be an old-time monster hunter. That that uh, Reed heard stories about Clem from. So Reed would look at look at uh, V. It, what did you do, call? What did you call my great grandfather? Clem. Clem, the little drummer boy. <laughs> so he must have got his nickname from somewhere else. Oh, yes, 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 yes. They called him the human metronome. Metro for short, when he came to the island. <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. He helped hmm. work on a lot of the things that you're about to learn about. Sorry, I know you have many, many questions, Friar. What we're going to do, we're going to go up these stairs after you drop your bags in the carriage. And there is the... Museum of History of Planos. And we're going to go through there and we're going to learn a few things and then we're going to head up head up to the main island. This is actually a smaller island off the base. And we're going to head up to the main island where your hotel is and you'll be staying. So what uh, Friar Ruckus would hear all that they're actually related and uh, put his arms in the air and, and say praise Agma. Uh <laughs> And then then quote some scripture, which is, And then Ogma said, The world is big, but also small. That is so true. It is so... What a blessing to to be amongst family here. Yes, yes, we're... we're, uh, It's amazing that that Ogma has has blessed us with this reunion. What... What what are we... Where where are we going now? Go, Go on, Luis. So follow me and you guys follow her up all of the steps and see all the green spaces and there are palm trees. It's lovely. It's beautiful. There are a lot of statues of monsters up on pedestals, kind of like miniature versions, like some bronze dragons, some, you know, bronze beholders, bronze trolls, bronze giants, just like all kinds of things as you're going up and she's pointing them out and she's kind of just also explaining. She's like, well, we'll get to this in, in the museum. But right now, the island is ran by the descendants of the people who made the planar engine that removed all of the monsters from the world. And also, we have a lot of constructs that help us do all of the work. And then there is a large group of druids who come and help service the monsters and help build the environments and make sure everything is living in harmony together. Monsters? What do you mean, monsters? So, the Great Banishment removed all monsters from the world, as you as you know, I'm sure. We have very carefully plucked them out from the plane to which they were banished and brought them back. And then you turned them to stone right here, huh? No, 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 no. These are just sculptures. I'm sorry, sweetie. They're just sculptures. Huh. These but- are real life creatures? The real living things, not creations. Oh, on the island? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Chuck, Fasc- you should so. Fascinating. Chuck, you should totally have the voice of the monster hunter from the raptor guy from Jurassic Park. Those these are things that are still... <laughs> All right, maybe I'll change my... <laughs> are these real creatures? Absolutely. Fascinating. So, well, we'll get into it. <laughs> We'll get into it in the museum, and you guys get to the top of the steps, and it's almost like a, an airplane hangar. Uh, it's very, very long. It's a very long building, and it says, carved into the marble, History of history Museum of Planos. You guys all walk inside. There's big, beautiful glass doors, and there's a receiving area, and a coat check, and all these other things. And after the first desk, the 
as you go straight back, you see a, a display, and it's just called The Architects. There are big marble, almost like tombstones sticking out of the ground with bronze plates on them. And it is listing every single name of the wizards and the engineers and everyone who built the uh, the planar engine that sucked all of the monsters out of the world. Reed will look for Clem's name. Yeah. And he'll point it out. Look, there's there's my great-grandfather's name. That's him, all right. Does it say I, anything else besides their names? Does it say, give any other information about them? Uh, it, no, they would just be in a... Like, in a section, he would be under engineers. Engineer? I didn't know he was an engineer. I thought he just played the drums. There you go. Uh, I, um, I'd like to know if there's any other people. Like, are we the only group here? Or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there are... It's kind of sparsely populated, because you guys are... Like, it sounds like it's made for big crowds. But so, Louise is explaining to you, that you, you asked, you know, yeah. you kind of bring that up to her, because there aren't that many people around, mm -hmm. and she explains to you that you guys have been brought as part of a free preview, mm -hmm. and she explains that there have been kings and princes and all these, like, very famous, important people brought to the island for this preview, but in, like, two or three months, they're going to open it up to whoever wants to come and visit. And is it going to be, like, you pay money to get in? Is it... Uh, just just enough to to cover expenses. Okay. <laughs> just curious. <laughs> if, if, like, you banished all the monsters in the world just to make some bucks, that's hilarious. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in a hundred... All right, I got this business plan in a hundred right. years. Right, yeah. Like. <laughs> so are we testing something. the park for her or them? In a, in a, not, I don't want to say testing, but in a way, I guess. Yeah, you guys Just are. Just checking it out. Yeah, it's like, uh, things, you know, yeah. media nights at theme parks or preview nights. Like, you know how they will let in all the press first and yeah. also special guests. You guys are a group of special guests. And they are actually inviting a lot of press people here, too. We can get the word out fast with our, mm -hmm. our church, probably. So. Eh, it's just, I think you, I think you're just... They here. they wanted to invite you, you your temple specifically. So R Ruckus would be just blown away by this, these all the, these lists of people that he um, he would probably pull all the kids together and say, look 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 at look at these these gifts of Agma. All of them have done something to make our world a better place, and all of them are here because Agma let them. Look, children, look upon these great names. And kind of like, I mean, really, like, he would just believe that Ogma, like, basically blessed all these people to have this great accomplishment. Because, again, Ogma's thing is the end of it, like, the idea that this would all be possible. So, you know, while, while probably Ogma had nothing to do with this, he's going <laughs> to swing it that way that it was definitely Ogma. Uh, Louise, do you have, like, a pamphlet of the island? Um, maybe a map of where we're going? Uh, yes, actually at the front desk they would have maps. So you oh. guys all would get a map of the island and just like all the exhibits and places and things there. Fascinating. Do you want me to read out some of the, some of the zones? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Zones? We're gonna have to zones. load up? Load, yes. <laughs> some load time? Hopefully no one blocks the, remember people would block the zone and then you couldn't get through. Oh, I always thought that yeah. was funny. Like, oh, ogres, ogres and, just sitting yeah. there. I used to hang out with an ogre that would buy shrink potions for they wouldn't block the that, that entrance nice. way. Yeah, what are we talking about? EverQuest. Okay, never played that. Yeah, it was uh, it was great in its time. Gotcha. In its time. So there is you guys. You look at the map and you notice that you're definitely on an island um, that is kind of off of Planos, just slightly, like there's a very wide, long island off the coast, and it's separated by a giant ravine. There is a platform that goes up to a place called Planos City, and that seems to be, like, kind of the, the big hub, probably, you know, that's going to be where your hotel is and everything. And then there are a few different zones. There's the Creature Coast, which is out, uh, it's like a bay over on the west side of town where there's a there looks like a like a big theater or something is built onto the water looking at the map and the southwest there and southwest point there is a swamp and 
a town and a castle there, and it's called Terror Town. There is a place called Monster Mountain, which is to the northwest. There's a big space kind of in the middle of the island called Everyday Monsters. All the way up in the north is Dragon's Domain. And that is where the dragons live. And it kind of looks like some barrens and some highlands and some mountains and some forests. And that was V's specialty was dragons? Yeah, dragons. Super ex- Yeah, V would get really excited just seeing that on the map. Yeah, so you notice that on the map and... Louise is like, yes, you're going to see real life dragons here. Absolutely unseen in a hundred years. It's going to be incredible. I'm so excited. (laughs) (laughs) Now there's good ones and bad ones. Like, would you maybe ask like what color of dragons they have so that you can know? Yeah, sure. Um, What, um, what types of dragons do you have? Oh, a little bit of everything. We have at least one or two of each color. Really? How do you can How do you contain them? We we're, we're going to get to that right here in the History Museum. And you guys walk past the the big placards and you get to a space that is full of art. And the art is explaining like just what what happened. As you're walking through and pointing, you know, uh, Louise is pointing at all of these paintings. You're right now you're in the section called prehistory. The island of Planos has many legends surrounding it. It was called the doorway of the gods, the birthplace of the material plane, the original source of magic, the home of lost planar travelers, a gateway to the underworld and even a bridge to heaven. Adventurers sought it out since the dawn of civilization. 300 years ago, and you guys are kind of getting into like, from the prehistory part where it was talking about adventurers and showing all these paintings, to another part called Discovery. And you're seeing, you know, a bunch of statues and some relics and some, uh, some like mannequins and things wearing adventurers armor. That's all kind of like rotted and whatever. There's a there's an old boat that's been preserved and a bunch of other artifacts. Adventurers sought it out since the dawn of civilization. Three hundred years ago, a ship full of adventurers discovered the source of its mystery. Planar gems buried deep underground. And you guys get to a display that is, it's kind of like roped off around it, and it is a pile of, like, and they're very, very large gems, maybe like four or five, six feet tall. But they look like concrete. They don't look sparkly. They don't look shiny. They're very, very flat and gray. Planar gems exist in all planes at once. And their power made the island difficult to find since it skipped through space and time. And she has, she pulls out of a pouch on the back of her, actually, I think it would be the front of her belt, maybe like a fanny pack, because she seems like the fanny pack kind of type. Yeah. She pulls out a pipe and she packs the pipe and she's explaining the planar gems to you a bit. And she lights the pipe and starts puffing on it. And she picks her rod back up, which is a a golden rod with a clear glass globe on the end. And she casts what is, if you're a magic-y person, detect magic. And you guys notice that the planar planar gems start changing. And they stop looking like concrete, just like like gems made out of concrete. They darken. They become black and glossy like obsidian. Then they get like blacker and darker and impossibly dark. Like it's just a flat black surface with absolutely no light shining off of it. Then it fills with like what would probably look like to us like television static, like a bunch of like fuzziness. So it's like it's, it's like a flat shape to you. And then it's fuzzy. And then feels like you're moving in closer towards it and you look down at your feet 
and you're not you're like you're just standing still but you just feels like it's just really sucking you in as this static just keeps going and then you see like the space between the static and the blackness you start to see color and that color keeps coming closer and closer to you until it starts to kind of fill your eyes and your mind and surround you and then the color starts to warp and change and it's almost like you're surrounded by tiny shards of glass and each shard of glass is looking into a new dimension looking into a new universe you see some are like volcanoes exploding some are galaxies some are planes and it's just like flying all around you and there's no one else next to you anymore it's just an infinite fog all around you all that you can see of colors dimensions uh, just on these little broken pieces of glass, these little tiny windows, all just everywhere under you, above you. And then instantly, whoosh, whoosh, it just all flows all the way straight back into the gems. And you, you, you stumble and you're like, whoa, whoa, what the hell was that? And Louise is done smoking on her pipe. Well, that was about seven minutes. When the island was first discovered, we often found skeletons around some of the planar rocks. So be careful if you're out there, because they still exist on the island. Be careful not to cast detect magic or any other spells near them. Right, Ruckus, so, well, he, so he always has like a flask. Yeah, uh, like it'll like be wrapped around him. He'll like, pull, like take it out and like look at it. Like, what's in this? Like, what did I? <laughs> what did I do? Yeah, that was trippy as hell. Yeah. Like, you guys like flew in there and you were surrounded by all of the space and time, and it was uh, it was kind of mind blowing for a second there, for sure. But so these are just around the island. I gotta believe that's a flaw in the amusement park system. Oh no 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 no! Usually they're buried underground. Oh, uh, you would only okay. discover them if you're if you're off the beaten path. Okay, okay. Reed will look at her. Uh, does she have any instruments on her? No, no. Okay. What's instruments? Instruments like, like uh, flute, okay. banjo. You know that pipe is giving secondhand smoke to the children. <laughs> You should probably that's not put a it concept out. that's been developed in our <laughs> world yet. Cancer. That's yeah, a joke. Yeah, no, I got gotcha. <laughs> you. Good. You can totally smoke indoors here. Mm. It's mm. fantasy past. Mm. She explains how adventurers often came here and died, and then you guys keep going through other displays after the planar rocks about how it was mostly human wizards. They got a crazy eye. They they realized they could use these planar gems as artifacts to trap things and to, to fling creatures and monsters throughout planes and dimensions. And then one got the crazy idea. Let's just get rid of them all. Akma. Ruckus is like, that's Akma. That right there. And uh, you see a statue of... Rupert, who sent the letter, mm -hmm. Rupert Klinko, the gnome, and a bunch of, in the, like, he's in a circle of ten, and there's nine other humans with him, and there's little placards on each one talking about, you know, them being the, the core group of wizards who came up with this idea and designed it, and Louise is explaining about how clearly it was humans that would have the the gumption, the brashness to just say, hey, we're going to get rid of monsters. And you guys go through and you see more displays of spell scrolls and models of a thing called the planar engine. And in that planar engine, they would capture from the, the natural world a monster and put it in the planar engine and cast a spell on it, and it would get rid of not just that monster, but every single monster of the same type on the whole globe. 
So you can kind of see why now it took four years for the Great Banishment to happen, because they were capturing things, they were bringing them over, they were banishing all of them from the entire world. And then you see at the end of uh, the museum, you learn that they wanted to keep it a secret until because it was such a powerful piece of technology. You could have put a human in there. You could have put an elf in there. You could have put a gnome in there and it would have wiped them out. So they actually, since most of the wizards were humans, they had to wait until the people that created it passed away. And then they buried that knowledge and they buried it forever. And they took it, they took apart the planar engine and they destroyed it. They've, you know, done something similar but much smaller to bring back one or two of the monsters over the past 20 years as they have built up this educational park. And the last thing you guys see uh, as you leave the backside is a massive, massive statue of Ogma. You're gone. Yay. There he is, children. Praise be to Ogma. Praise be to <laughs> Praise be to Ogma. <laughs> There's ten of you. So there would be uh three carriages up to four people each. They go up to the bot the base of this. Um, you know, you know the first hill on a roller coaster, how it has that chain that it latches onto, and then it goes chick, 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 oh, chick, yeah. chick. So yeah, there's an incline where some workers are pulling, you know, pulling the carriages off of the horses, attaching them to the giant incline, and everyone rides up to the top of a cliffside, and where at the top of the cliff you can see, you know, over you're over water. There's a big ravine here. Uh, and you go up, 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 up from this kind of smile shape island below the main island of Planos. And there is a big, beautiful white city on the edge of the cliff. Planos City. You guys have any questions thus far that you want to ask? Uh... So in a nutshell, there's these gems... And those gems are across each plane. They figured out. And then they had the planar engine where they used the, the planar gems to fuel the planar engine. And they would put creatures in there. And that would make all the creatures disappear on the earthen plane. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask on that a little bit more. So they captured creatures or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. put them in this machine. Mm -hmm. And then it just wiped them all out. Yep. So there would be the process of catch, capturing it at first, so then they started to banish them to, and teleport them just straight to the machine? No, they, they're all banished to different planes of existence. Okay. So they really just moved them. They didn't kill them all. They just were like, all right, now you're going to live over here, you're going to live over here. And it was multiple planes, some of them kind of similar to our own. Do you have control over which planes that the monsters are sent to? Oh, yes, it was all very, very safe and very, very uh, respectful. Now, when you did this banishment of a certain type of creature, then you only have one or two left here on the island, correct? Well, correct. So those monsters, we decided to bring back from the planes which we banished them from. But we didn't have the planar engine to do it, so we could only bring back one or two. Now, did you get a sign or something from Agma to bring those creatures back? It was more like, um, we didn't want people to forget. We wanted to preserve this, this part of our history, this part of our, our humanity. Also, you'll notice that the displays in the center of them, there are always, always towers. And these towers create a planar bubble. And the monsters cannot escape out of these planar bubbles because they have a weave of magic wrapped around them. So it keeps you safe because all of our roads and all of our paths are outside of the bubble. And also there's a second bubble surrounding the tower itself inside the bubble so the monsters can't get to it. So stay in the bubble. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Stay, stay outside, outside of the bubble. Of the bubble. Outside of the bubble, please. Read, read, pay attention. And there will be walls, and there will be fences, and there will be plenty of signs to ensure your safety. Reed understood it, but Robbie is confused about the <laughs> double bubble. Double is bubble? Double bubble, yeah. That was Reed. There <laughs> double is a double bubble. bubble. Yeah. There's a bubble inside the bubble that protects the towers that keep the monsters. So there's like a device that creates a bubble, a huge bubble that the monster can like okay. be in. Okay. And then there's... So a bubble cage, yes. basically. Yeah, yeah and okay. there's a second kind of barrier around the tower itself. <laughs> you, uh, you said you that you no longer have the planar engine. Did I hear that right? That's right. We decided, or not we, but um, my my parents and my grandparents decided that after they got rid of the monsters, there would be no good. Yes, exactly, Chuck. That is Chuck. <laughs> Chuck drew a picture of a bubble in a bubble. <laughs> I get it. A force field. Uh, yeah, and a force he drew field a little, a cute little dinosaur-looking thing in between the two bubbles. I understand it now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Concent Concent Does concentric Reed circles. understand it? Reed understands Reed it right away. It. He got Robbie it before Robbie it. did it. Okay. okay. I maxed out. Well, I didn't max out, but Reed's intelligence is 16 because we worship Ogma. I was like, I got to be a smart character somewhat. If we're going to worship a god of knowledge. There you go. Uh, sorry, I forget what I was saying. Uh, the banishment or the why they got rid of the... Oh, yes, engine. yes. Yeah, she explains that basically, like, um, this could be the most devastating and dangerous tool on the face of the world. Like, you could just kill everybody if you wanted to. Like, all the humans, all the dwarves, all the elves, whatever. Yeah. And they did not want to do that. Or not necessarily kill them, but, like... Banish. Yeah. Banish them. Like, yeah. It would be very, very dangerous. And you said it's been taken apart, correct? That is correct. No longer, oh, good. And all records of how it was put together were also destroyed. Hmm. Well, surely there are records of it, because that's history. You would have to keep that, of course, right? No, absolutely not. It was too dangerous. I agree with it being dangerous, but that's knowledge there that you decided to destroy. That's true. Knowledge is power, but sometimes that power can't be trusted. The knowledge is not needed anymore, either. Well, obviously we retained a small part of the knowledge, because we were able to bring some of the beasts back. But the engine itself... All records destroyed. Did your ancestors plan this to bring back a couple of the creatures? The end, well, the original wizards? Um, no, I don't think, I don't think that was ever in their mind, to bring back some. Life always finds a way. That's right. Nah. <laughs> Chuck's like, I was sitting on that. I was waiting to say that. Darn you. <laughs> Life uh, finds a way. <laughs> so you guys, you guys get to the top of the cliffside and the carriage pops off and there are more construct horses waiting for you. And Louise reaches out to some of the workers there and tells them where you're going. And she takes you guys to your kind of cliffside villa. And it is a kind of a long two-story set of, you know, it's basically like a, think of like a motel. A bunch of doors on the outside. The back point, uh, the back part of it is, it's beautiful. It's marble. Everything is gorgeous here still. And now that you guys are on top of the cliff, it's changed from palm trees to more like, um, those squiggly, bushy trees that you would see in, like, San Diego. Like, they're kind of windy and, and, and I don't know the name of them, but they're windy and wiggly and kind of, like, bushy at the top. Nope. Nope. All right. Never been to San Diego. So. Think, like, Dr. Seuss trees. Some Dr. Seuss trees. They have hmm. Dr. Seuss trees in San Diego? Yeah, that's where he's from. That's why all Dr. Seuss trees look silly. Because San Diego <laughs> trees look silly. This. Yeah. I want to go to San Diego and see this. Are they different colors, like pink and purple? No, no. They're just <laughs> actually here. Sure, here, here. All they're right. pink and purple, and they're blue, and they're all sorts of weird yeah, colors. Yeah, yeah. Bushy tops. Yeah, it's fantasy world. Let's do it. Um, so you guys get to the place that you're staying at. There is a restaurant attached to the end of it that is, you know, open air, just cafe tables, and it's just a beautiful evening, and the sun is uh, starting to go down. And it is the end of your first uh, half day at Planos. Louise is with you. She says she will also be staying in the same apartment building. 
so all of the places that I listed earlier, all of the places like Cre uh, Creature Coast, Shifting Sands, Everyday Monsters, Monster Mountain, and Terror Town, she's, and the uh, Dragon's Domain. She's basically like, where do you want to go tomorrow morning? Friar Ruckus would probably leave it to the uh, Monster Hunter. So, uh, v, v, what's your opinion on this? You, you were the one to see all these before. And also just looking at the map itself. What's the closest? The closest one is the, definitely... Dragon, uh, Dragon's Domain is the farthest. I think Dragon's is Domain is the farthest, and yeah. she recommends if you do Dragon's Domain to do something else on the way there. And yeah. you can do just about anything else except for Terror Town on the way there. As excited as uh, V is to see dragons, I feel like he'd want to save the best for last, Yeah, in his opinion. So, whatever the closest um The closest thing one is Everyday Monsters, which is like the plains and the forests. It's on our way, so let's mm -hmm. just hit up Everyday Monsters. Yeah, it's like right in the middle of the map and just north of you. I would suggest Everyday Monsters. Great. Reed will ask the kids, yeah, kids are, you, I, yeah, are I, you I cool with kids. that? The Everyday Monsters children? Yeah, are any of the kids like dying to see one? They're just, they're all very, very excited about anything. They live in a small town. A lot of them don't even have parents. And this is like the coolest thing they've ever done in their entire life. Uh, so they're just, they like, they're like will, we, will we be able to see everything? And Louis is like, yeah, yes, absolutely. You'll be able to visit all of the attractions in your week here. Wow, a week. It's, it's nice. Yeah, it's going to be a full five days. All expenses paid? Yes. Yeah, yeah. they're taking care of you. Pretty Spare nice. no expense. No expense. Spare no expense. All right, so everyday monsters in the morning. Louise mentions, now, I do don't know if you knew this or if you looked at your books before you came, but Rupert Klinko, the Lord Governor of Planos and the Mastered Wizard of the Great Banishment, studied in your same temple of Savvy Gut when he was but a boy some 500 years ago. He would love to meet you all in the morning. I didn't know that. Did you, Friar Rook? <laughs> no, I, I would think that I would have. I, I don't know how I missed that. How embarrassing. And he takes a swig of whatever they're drinking. <laughs> some, <laughs> some wine or something. This is just blessings from Magma. A former member of our church has come to the island, and now we have that blessing as well to be here. Frau Rucker will throw his arms up in the air, probably a little bit too emphatically, and say, "Praise Ogma! Praise Ogma!" <laughs> maybe, maybe spilled a little bit of beer when he did that. Dude. All right, there's four <laughs> girls on the trip and three boys. Boys in this room, girls in the other room. No trouble. Cindy, you stay away from Aston. Doesn't she have a crush on him? <laughs> she does. She does. It's in the notes. <laughs> Someone stole my toothbrush, and I don't appreciate it. So I don't, I don't think you packed it. <laughs> <laughs> Another time your toothbrush is missing again, V. <laughs> Monster killer, the galore, but bad breath on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so who is uh, the worst sleeper among you? How do you... So, Friar no, Ruckus just, would likely oh, be passed uh, out more than sleeping, so yeah, I, I'm, he, I'm probably out. I, out. It wouldn't, I would be a good sleeper, I would what say. What about Wait, V? Does he have, like, terror sleeper? dreams? Well, actually, V, you're I, an elf. I'm an elf. I don't really so don't, sleep. I go in a trance, so. Yeah, so you, you trance your four hours. You are, you're kind of, you're up in the middle of the night, or way before everyone else is, so maybe, like, th three or four in the morning or something. Mm-hmm. I'm checking on everybody. I just like walk through the room or wherever we're all at. So you go uh, maybe out to the, there's a balcony in your room and it's looking out over like down the cliff and over the ravine and down into the island. Uh, you look and you're, you're seeing with your, your excellent elven vision that you swear. I mean, you're still kind of far away and it's kind of far down. You swear you see like a one of those kind of scrappy look of druid people climbing around on the giant trusses that have the lift 
up to the main island. So from the small island, we go up the lift that takes us to the main island where we are. Correct. I see someone on the lift that's connected to the big island where yeah, we you are see someone climbing like, up You there. swear you see like a, one of those weird, scrappy, dirty, druidy looking people climbing around on the trusses and that structure, that lift that goes up to the main island. So when you say scrappy, like does this person look familiar? No, no, they're just they're just dirty looking people wearing antlers. Well, and... How did they get invited? <laughs> <laughs> well, they take care of the the zones. They take care of the scenery. Oh, okay. So, okay, gotcha. Yes. That's right. Okay, yes. so the so druids. The, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, so it's somebody there are that I would have taken care of, like the uh, the monsters and the spaces and the mm-hmm. the climates. And you swear you see one of them because they got like you know antlers and mm-hmm. things, and they're doing something on the trusses, and you think that's kind of weird. Yeah. Wonder what he's up to. Thanks for seeking your teeth into Crit Sandwich. I'm truly honored you'd spend time with us. We are Crit Sandwich on Facebook, at Crit Sandwich on Twitter. If you like our podcast, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts to help others find us. If you have any feedback or would like to contribute to our random game world chart, Hit us up on social media or email us at critsandwichpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks.